can uh, we can have a TV show here. So uh, everybody, look at the panel here we have, and we're and um, uh, oh, Rick Horn's having trouble. See that down there on the bottom? If you if you look on my uh, uh, thing here, anyway. Uh, where were we? So, you, so you, it, 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 we are now to believe that things are so bad in uh, in, uh, in in Canada that in order to bury somebody, the ground has to thaw. Well, they they don't tend to do a lot of. Uh, I mean, it's just ashes. Oh, I, I'm sure. I'm sure if it was if it was the whole shebang, they you know they bring out a, a backhoe and they do their thing but they were just waiting for the uh, the good weather and and for people to come and show up and do that so wait a minute you bury the ashes yeah you can yeah usually don't you scatter them someplace the loved one would have liked to have had them scattered like you know over pamela she, anderson's she, body she or something scattered she wanted them scattered in a box in a hole so that's where she's going <laughs> <laughs> Scattering in Canada is littering. Oh, really? Uh, yes. Uh, is that you, uh, Jason? Yeah. Yeah, we can't see you, by the way. Uh, uh, it says my camera's on. I'll turn it off. Now. Turn it on and off again. Uh, can Can you other people see him? Uh, now it's no. now it's yeah. now, it's, around now, now, now it's coming through. Yes, Patrick. How do you want to be buried? Uh, well, at first they're gonna. Donate me to science and whatever they do with me to do with me. I don't give a shit. Yeah. But anyway, I, my, I made this point to Jim before. Um, I make my bed every morning. Every morning. Every morning I make my bed because I cannot stand a messy house. And <laughs> when I go in my bedroom, I make sure that the bed is made because I want it. So that if I ever have guests that stop over unexpectedly, yeah, the bed is made, the bathroom clean. Yeah, I, I'm a neat freak that way, and the throw pillows on the bed have a certain way that they go on. So I mean, you're you an know, anal, I'm, you're an anal compulsive. <laughs> I'm right with your wonderful, beautiful, intelligent wife. I'm with you, Patrick. Look at, look, look at my room, Patrick. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute, people. I, I, it, it, first of yeah. all, first of hey, all. Dan, yeah. I, I would probably pull a Robin Williams if I had to live like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. But you couldn't die, kill yourself that way because that would be too messy for you. Well, actually, at that point, I'd probably do it just to spite whoever it was to find me. Patrick would kill himself by voting Democrat. Well, I'll tell you, I don't want to bring up the... I, I hate to bring up the Robin Williams thing again, because tonight I figured... I figured, you know, it's been, what, four days? Yeah, and tonight, tonight it would be safe to watch Mario Lopez or somebody like that, because they probably said everything they possibly can about Robin Williams. But no... They're oh, no. still grinding away at, at Robin Williams, grinding away, grinding away. So I had a big argument. In fact, it, it wound up on our little movie review thing with Michael Snyder that I didn't think it was terribly nice of him to commit suicide. Uh, how many people do we have here now? Uh, this is it. This that's is it. it. We have a full Where house now. Full house. Yeah, Phil can't get in now. But we but don't worry, Tony won't stick around for a long time because eventually his dog will start eating something and he'll have to <laughs> give the dog the Heimlich. Right, Tony? <laughs> Tony? She's actually sleeping. She's actually sleeping. <laughs> Talk to her about it. Yeah, yeah. Turn on turn on your camera. We can't Honest to God. What? Honest to God he's whispering. Oh, so he won't wake up the dog. No, got well, everybody, <laughs> let's start screaming and wake up the dog. <laughs> hey, can I can I just say one thing, Alec? Yes. Jim, Wait a minute. Hey, <laughs> Is that you, Jim? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well. Anyway, what? I have to defend my. Jim made a comment about me committing suicide by voting Democrat. As a matter of fact. That's what I did on Tuesday for the election. When I, I did vote Democrat. Oh, for sure. For us. 
He had no choice. There were no Republicans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we actually, for the sheriff in Milwaukee, yeah. I voted against the Republican each time that there had been one against the why, Democrat. Why, why, I like the Democrat why, so why, much. Why have you done that? Because I, I, I like the job that he'd done. Now you see, there's no look, reason I, to change. Just, you know, I love it when you tell me you're a Republican. Because... While I know that in certain ways, yes, you are a Republican, okay. Uh, I don't think that on the whole, uh, you're a, you're a, you're truly a Republican. That you you know you so many times that we talk to you, you say, hey, I voted for the Democrat or I did this. I think you're just a free thinker, Jason. It's a rhino. Say in the past, I always used to be. I've always been a Democrat, and I always used to vote for. Judges and uh, law enforcement. I'd vote for a Republican because I always like agreed more on that side. But man, now uh, you cannot get me to vote for a Republican for for a dog catcher. Well, I want. Uh, I'll tell you what I did once. I went into a polling booth and I looked at all the names there, and uh, there's a Democrat, and there's a Republican. I knew who that was, and then there was uh, somebody else from another party, and then down at the bottom, believe it or not, it said Communist Party. So I figured. Ah, what the hell? I voted communist. What, and it wasn't, what do you mean, Patrick? Pa Patrick's giving me the uh, the fifty yeah. cent look here. What? 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 Chairman Mao, come on! It's like I was going to change <laughs> this country to a done. communist country by my one vote. Do no, you know? Or have you ever belonged to the communist party? <laughs> you didn't belong. I just voted. I'm going to tell you, Dale. Yeah. Four years ago, when this same sheriff was running, yeah, he was running. Um, against a Republican, a very good friend of mine who is also a big supporter of this guy, Yeah, she just pulled a straight Republican ticket and didn't even bother marking individual because this was the general election where you could do that then. And I bitched her out for a good hour and a half or two hours yeah. that if this guy loses because of your one vote, because you were so stupid as to just vote straight party. Yeah. I will never ever let you let you live it down, and I will haunt you till the day you die. Really? And oh ever my God. Since then, she'd realized that when it comes time for the election, you need to read each name mm. rather than just pull a straight ticket. Because to me, that's laziness. And um, I marked each and every one, mm -hmm. and for that election. It was all Republican for me, but the Democrat sheriff. And, you know, for her, it was all Republican. And I, I would have, I probably would never talk to her again. Really? <laughs> well, I, uh, but so you, you, but you were giving me a dirty look because I voted Repu a, a, a communist at one point. I, it was more of I wasn't surprised. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Alex is going to vote communist. <laughs> you, you know, and like the whole country went communist that year. It was terrible. And uh, I know, we're all I living under this uh, dictatorship now. Uh, yes, Jason. I was going to say, that just brought back memory. I think he said vote a straight ticket, but it almost sounded like he said pull a straight ticket. Yeah. When uh, you were, I don't know, when you were younger, even yeah. more recently, did you ever have the actual booth where you had to go in and pull the lever yeah. to yeah. close oh, the curtain? I, and pull I, the think, I think I think we still had to do that yeah. here in New York, what, yeah. uh, about uh, eight years ago, seven years the, ago. The first time I ended up moving to the Metro Detroit area and I voted over there, we had those old booths. And they talked always talked about the elderly being intimidated by either electronic voting or you know even the the ones where you just with a marker fill in the circle talk about being intimidated when i walked into one of those things and i'm looking at all these levers and gadgets and gears and everything i'm like holy shit, what the hell is this and then i didn't know you had to pull the lever to open the curtain back up and that actually punched all your but you cards see they, sp they spent their they spent right, their whole they spent their whole life doing it that way and so it, to them, that was very familiar and very common. I, I agree with you. Those machines intimidated the hell out of me because I didn't know that by pulling the lever what would happen. And then, you know, you got to pull the, th the whole thing back and the curtains open up the and the bias. band plays and whatever. Um, the great Oz is revealed. <laughs> yeah. But then recently uh, I went to my polling booth down here, I think when, when I voted for Obama, which is the biggest political mistake of my life. 
Uh, I uh, oh, oh, what other choice did you have? Uh, well, anyway, they they have this thing, uh, and you fill it out, and you just you know you put the pin mark in it, and then you put it in like a Xerox machine or something or some kind of machine, and it goes in and registers your vote. There's a shredder on the other side, and there's a shredder on the other side. Yeah, and I'm going. I don't like this as much as that. Uh, you know, the mm. problem is, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what the problem is. My mother, all her life, had to dial a phone. Right? Yep. And you, you would go to anybody who could dial a phone back in those days. And they were blah, 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 And they went as fast. Yeah. They yeah. went, they, they went uh, 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 just oh, on show. Jim because Dow. this is TV night. We have show and tell. Yep. He held up an actual, Jim held up a real <laughs> old that's phone. His actual, that's his actual telephone. Yeah. That's phone. right. Yeah. But uh, she, she, you know, she would dial really fast. Right? Now... All of a sudden, here come the touchtone telephones, and here's my mother. Meme, 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 <laughs> meme. Meanwhile, you get a kid who's now you, grown up using touchtone telephones, and he's going, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> right? So, I mean, that's really, really what the problem is with, with those voting machines. Same thing. What you're used to using, you're, you grow up on, you, that's fine, you know. And now I don't, you know, you know what, uh, what the age we live in now, uh, uh, I don't know my wife's phone number. <laughs> uh, do you, Jason? Yeah, I do know my wife's uh, number. Oh, you do know the number? such a hard time about it that I actually had to learn it. But I also, I work for the telephone company, because, so I have to learn crap like that. Well, but if we all go to our telephones now, look up the name and just push the button. There's no number anymore, you know. <laughs> It's just the name there, and so if I had to like call Jim, I ha I have his phone number in my in my phone, but if I had to phone Jim, I, I have no idea what the number is, you know. Don't you I just only have to upgrade on say Canada. Uh, give me the only guy who has a phone in Canada and is waiting till the Canada tundra thaws out so he can Canada. bury his mother-in-law. It's a huge party line. <laughs> it's a huge party. I, I, only ha I only have to remember the last four numbers of, of people's phone numbers here in town. Well, that's because they only, only have four, four uh, numbers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, yes, Jason. I said when I actually first started for the phone company, yeah. I ran into somebody who still had a party line. And there was actually still two parties on the party line. And mm -hmm. that just, it, it, I spent so many hours on it because it has to be the right way for it to ring the one side or ring the other side. And I didn't know how to do it because it was so such old technology. I was never even trained on it. It spent me three hours to just know, to find out I have to just flip these two wires. Well, I'll tell you what happened when I was a kid. I remember this. God, now, 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 now you can say I'm an old guy. I remember that sometimes you had to, you got on the phone and the person who was on the party line was talking to somebody. So you I had, remember listen, that too, Alex. You had, you, you had to immediately hang up and then occasionally you would pick it up again to see if they were, weren't talking any longer. Now, of course, that doesn't exist anymore, but that was pretty damn annoying. Wow. You know? Oh, you mean you couldn't make a call until they were finished? Huh? Yeah, you, you couldn't call till they were finished. And you couldn't know that you were ever in a private call. Oh, you were never in a private call. Somebody could listen no. in to you. Do, you. do you remember those days at all, Mark? No, you're not old enough. No, I missed out that fun. How about you, Jim? When did that all go out? I had, I had, I had a, I had a uh, apartment that had a party line. There was, there was uh, six, six apartments in the building, and it was a the, yeah, there was a party line. You had to uh, make sure. Other people weren't using it at the time. Wow. How'd you get charged then? They just knew how to charge you for your calls? No. It, uh, good question. Mm, that's a, that is a good question. I, 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 I Believe me, when, when I'm talking about this, I was still only like about six years old. That's pretty cool, though. Get off the phone! <laughs> and on all the phone, yeah. and all the phone numbers, it was, the phone point. numbers weren't like, you know, 646-837-0868 or whatever the number might be. I think I just gave out my home phone number. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, it, it was like Garfield seven, uh, you know, Garfield three one two 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 or something. Alex, you remember when on the honeymooners he got the phone? Yeah, he went crazy. Remember that? <laughs> Jack Gleason got the phone. Oh, he thought he really went. 
But there, oh, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. we, I had mine was Garfield actually, and the school I went to across the street was Garfield School, so that was kind of amazing. Mm. But there was Yukon, Yukon, and Tuxedo. How how that one ever happened? And then That's here, one of the wire districts I work in is called the Tuxedo. Oh, really? <laughs> it's just the way that it spells out on the keypad. Oh, you know, it's Tux. Yeah. But uh, and people would do, go. That's why you had. That's why you had the letters on the on the dial. Uh, so you could uh, go. Yeah. So you yeah. could go the T U, you know, whatever. Huh. It was Olympia. My grandparents was Evergreen. An aunt was Nightingale. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Wow. I see you have Teresa behind you tonight. Yeah, uh, she's Rick. working for a change. Uh, she, <laughs> mm-hmm. What do you mean she's working for a change? She's working. She, she's got that big event next week. and, and A the, week from today, and then I'm done. Never again. Oh, yeah, are you quitting the business? I, I Yes, I she resigned. Already resigned. I resigned in June. I, I see. You said you were going to renegotiate, though, to stay longer. No, they uh, well, yeah, they asked me to stay till November first, um, but this is the last time I will do this event ever. So I ever, ever, yeah, ever. So, ever. so you're gonna just be bringing home the bacon now, uh, Rick? Oh, no, no, I'm no. Gonna she's work. still gonna, she's still gonna bring some in, but I just don't want to do this job anymore. Yeah, well, you know, uh, 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 Jim and I got our bitches working for us. <laughs> I got to figure out how to do that. They want to hire for you? Huh? I was husband. Say to Teresa, are you going to be the assistant that they want to hire for you? Yeah. That's correct. (laughs) Until November 1st, I told them I would do that for them. Wow. It it gives me my health insurance until we get back from vacation. That's all I care about. Okay. That's good. Uh, What? Yes. I assume Marjorie's still awake, right? So I can message her just to... What, 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 wait, wait, uh, there was some noise there, and I didn't hear your complete statement. I said Marjorie probably still awake. That I could send her a message on what you just said, right? You probably could. I don't know if she's still awake, but it, her her iPad will go ding ding, and yeah. she might take a look at it. You know. Mm, yeah. 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 Well, no, I know. I feel you know. I feel like a kept man now because I get I I get these messages every now and then from her. You know, I, I, you know, people message people. And sometimes it'd be nice if your wife, when she messaged you, said, I'm thinking of you right now and I love you. But what do her messages say? Empty out the garb, uh, <laughs> empty out the, uh, uh, the what do you call it? The, uh, the, uh, the dishwasher. So wait a minute now. Who's the bitch? Wait a minute. Are we, f- we're full, aren't we? Yeah. And Phil's trying to call. But I'm going to because I got a show to do tonight. Okay. You want to go, Jim? I got a show to do, okay. so I got to get ready. Okay, bye, bye, Jim. Bye, right, Jim. Okay, uh, let me uh, let me answer uh, Phil. Okay, now I have to get everybody. I have to turn my yeah, camera yeah, on in on. order to get everybody back on. It says there are too many people on this call for video upgrade. I didn't know you could upgrade past uh, this. Let me see here. Everybody's coming back now. In case you're watching us on TV, see them coming back. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, yeah, slowly but surely. See how we made way for you, uh, Dan? Me? Oh, not Dan, Phil. Phil, yeah. Yeah, we're not even getting a picture out of Phil yet. <laughs> Phil, start your camera again. Whatever. Anyway, uh, uh, so where were we? Oh, yeah, so I, I don't get these love messages. I get these messages, empty out the dishwasher. <laughs> So I'm, you two sound just like my my dad and and his wife. Oh my God! When I was listening to you earlier, yeah, th- that that's exactly what they do. <laughs> oh really? Your dad the and your wife? Oh, back and forth. I, yeah. Just, well, we're like that, that old arguing old married couple you see in restaurants. <laughs> uh, Patrick, you need to start your camera up again so I can see. Oh, you. okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, well, Mark Thorner, you, so you remember, you remember, you were, you remember parting lines? Did you say no? No, no. But I do remember the first phone number was Shore Road 54181. Oh, really? That was Bay Ridge. That was the exchange in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn was, was Shore ours, Road. Ours S-H. Was Garfield three, something, Garfield I can't remember now. I remember the the exchange at um, I think it was uh, MCA WMCA Plaza P L. Pl- yes, it was the Plaza Pl- nine thousand or Plaza nine one thousand. Something like that. Yeah. yeah, that was the on the air line when you would yep. call, call it. Yeah, 
The, the power line, I think we called it. It was nice because my mom worked for the phone company too, so we always had, or in, uh, we always had easy phone numbers growing up. So, and then there was the one phone number for all of the. It was like one phone number for all of the commercials. It was Murray Hill seven seven five hundred? That's right. Murray Hill seven seven five. Oh my God! Yes, I remember that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now I'll, I'll I'll make you all feel young. Because I'm going to mention something here that existed back then that you absolutely, probably nobody here remembers. Maybe Phil might, but I doubt it. How old I'm are you, Phil? I'm older than Phil. When there weren't zip codes. Yeah, I was in I zone was 35. Yeah, yeah, that one. And it was so, like Chicago 77, Illinois. New York 23. Brooklyn Nine. 35. Oh, so people do remember that. Do you know who had the first area code? The first area code. 212, right? New York oh, City? No. Was I think it, it was Detroit. What, was it Detroit? Yeah, I'm pretty sure there was something about Detroit had the first, it was either the first area code or came out with a exchange, you know, the first uh, three digits or something. Yeah. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Your mic isn't on loud enough, uh, Phil. Turn it up. I don't know. I don't know why it would go down. Uh, is it on now? And now it's fine. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, RFD three. It was a rural route, uh, and it had to do with the fire district. Uh, and our street, uh, the house didn't even have a number. It was just Andre Lane, and there were five houses on the street. Really. Wait, wait. I remember my uh, my phone number uh, when I was a kid. It was Peekskill seven four four eight five. Really? Yeah. I remember mine as a kid too. Clear as clear as day. Okay. What was it? what was it? HF three six nine eight one. What was it? HF three six nine eight one. HF. Yeah, I have to ask my dad what that meant. Because usually, the usually the, the initials they had in the beginning. Uh, were uh, attendant to a name like T U Tuxedo, G A Garfield. Uh, yeah. You know, so you would remember it. I think they didn't think people could remember long amounts of numbers, and yet today, we remember long, long. And that's why digits. most phone numbers are only seven digits long. But then you have your area code because the of area, seven digits is the. Yeah, the you have the code. area code, and then sometimes you have the country code. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know. Uh, but so you could wind up doing a string of maybe ten numbers, twelve numbers, something like that. But then with the phone numbers too, with the area codes, like we're uh, Detroit area is three one three, and was De uh, New York is a five one five or two one two. That the one in the middle stood for it was one of the original large uh, metropolitan areas. Well, yeah. you know, you know what I remember most of all was because uh, I was when I was a kid, I would listen to radio. Obviously, uh, that's why I love radio. And I would listen to the radio, and they would have all these shows like Captain Midnight and uh, Hop Along Cassidy and uh, uh, shows, a, a lot of other kid shows you wouldn't even know. And every one of these shows would have some kind of a premium associated with them. I mean, because they were all sponsored by cereals or like Ovaltine or whatever. And so if you sent the box top and the inner seal from, say, Ovaltine or whatever. Decoder ring. And then send 25 cents in coin or stamps. They actually allowed you to send stamps. And stamp or coins. <laughs> uh, they, would, uh, they would send you back whatever, you know, the Captain Midnight decoder badge or the uh, Little Orphan Annie decoder ring or the uh, uh, Tom Mix. Uh, I remember Glow in the Dark ring. With a compass on something? it, and every one of those places, you it it was like post office box something, Chicago seventy seven yeah. Illinois. Yeah. and it's really? what what is Look at this? It? I mailed a box three box tops in the Quaker for this years ago. I don't know if anybody knows what this is. So that's a Quisp, Quisp or something. Yeah, it's Quisp. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, Quisp. Yeah. I think it was three box tops, and yeah, and you, it did. See, and but you, let me let me let me blow up your picture here so that everybody is watching the TV can oh. see it. Okay, hold he's it. on the big one already. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, well, That's a little thing. It does spin, huh? Yeah, it's, it's got the Q on the belt buckle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what was terrible about 
Uh, 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 and now Doug is calling. Doug. Want me to drop I, off? Uh, uh, no. No. I, no, stick you around. You. Doug, you're going to have to call back later. Okay, Doug? Uh, Doug doesn't seem to understand. Why don't people listen to the program first and see if we're filled up? You can't tell. You can't tell. Yeah. No, I listened for a while. I, I, I had no idea. Yeah, no, we've been filled up since the very beginning. Um, yeah, you know, I had no idea. This is uh, this is getting to be a real problem. S same with last We're night. We're going to have to have everybody take a number or something. Well, you, you know, know, maybe what you got to do is uh, just like you do a station announcement for your call letters. Yeah. Uh, every once in a while do a, hey, we've got 10 at the... Uh, Good idea. Yeah, Doug, we're full, we're full up right now, but uh, later on, Tony will probably say good night, and then you can join us. Uh, or you could have Albert design a better app that uh, allows more people to come in with. Uh, well, I, I don't think I don't think he knows how to invent that kind of app, but you know, <laughs> if uh, they did, he would have. Mar done it Miranda could write that app. <laughs> Miranda could write that app. She's yeah, very, she could. Oh, oh, she's amazing. She's just yeah. amazing. But seriously, wouldn't that be nice to be able to develop something kind of in combination of like Facebook and what you do here now and to be able to do video? You're, you know, you're saying how this. Well, they do that on uh, they do that on uh, uh, Google. They have Google uh, Hangouts. Google yeah, Hang how many yeah. people can you have on with video? Uh, you can probably have a, maybe, maybe 30, two, maybe 30, something like that. But the, uh -huh. the, and we, we, we tried it out. We tried looking into it, but the sound isn't as good. The sound on Skype is extraordinary, and after all, aren't we doing a radio show here? You know, yeah, right? So uh, that was important, and I can put twenty-five people on right now if I don't want to see any of you. But I like seeing you because when you have something to see, well, I, of course, I get to see uh, 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 Patrick blow me Patrick. a kiss. Yeah. This is your live <laughs> studio audience, huh? This is your live studio audience. Well, also because I, I, you know, you can raise your hand when you want to talk, and you know, I, so I, 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 I feel I have more of a, a kind of a, almost a feeling of a salon here. All right, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I could put upwards to twenty-five people if I wanted to, but I can't with with video. So uh, because as soon as we hit the ten or the eleventh, everybody's picture freezes up. And I could keep going. I mean, tonight, well, we could add about 15 people on the line at the That's same good. time. Well, I don't know that I want to go to that many, you know? Yeah. I mean, what, what, at what point does it become unmanageable? Yeah. You know? Well, Nine. you know, <laughs> as Gabnet grows and grows, that problem's only getting you worse and worse. Well, what I'm going to so. have to do probably at that point is pay... If we made money, I'd have to pay uh, uh, Skype a lot of money because they have some new broadcast software. Can you uh, have two Skypes open, one on one computer? That's exactly and one what computer. I was thinking about. And, and one on the other? I, I could do that, but nobody, um, one could, I don't know if they could hear the other. You know, yeah, it's often true. a question it's of coming like. coming through to your console. Well, there's got to be a way to send mix minus to every channel. Yeah. If, if I. Um, uh, I don't even know how I set this thing up. All I know is it just worked. I didn't even do a mix minus on it. It just did it all by itself. Mm. But what I was thinking was, let's say we gave out Patrick's Skype number. And now people called Patrick, and he started having people on his line. I wouldn't be able to see them, but I could probably hear them. See no, them. because we, we tried that, or Albert tried that on his uh, program you know, somebody called somebody else on there, and then both of the people dropped off. Oh, really? Yeah. So it'd be like a sub-moderator. Yeah. But I, I, I need to I, take I, um, I, I, two I, Skypes on two channels of your board. I think that would yeah, work. two separate computers. Or... Yeah, but I, I imagine that if I wanted to have more, uh, I'm sure Skype is coming up with ways for having, like, broadcasters. I know they're coming out with a piece of equipment for broadcasters. Mm -hmm. So somebody could sit here and clear the calls, you know, and put them on. And maybe you could have 20, but, you know, hmm. uh, uh, that's, uh, you know. I think that's the next step, you know, from Facebook instead of just sitting there typing, you know, to actually be able to e even like search around like you used wait, to do wait, a chat room. Or I whatever, believe, am I, am I right or wrong about this? But on Facebook, you can do video chats. Good. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. so think yeah. about this, Alex. You can. Yeah. Yeah. If I if I logged off of if I logged off of here on my Skype yeah. and I logged into the old Skype and came up and called you from the old Skype, you know, the, uh, the yeah. GA uh, GA broadcaster one yeah. we used to use. Yeah. And it came through my board. 
Wouldn't that be an extension? He would drop out of the Skype call. He can't be on both on one computer. No, no, he wouldn't be. He would. He would just no, add he, me what, to. What, what I would he, just. What be he's calling saying? Him. What if if people called Rob, for example? Yeah. Right, in other right words, now. I'm using the old account that we used to use, GA Broadcaster. You're right? on it right now. No, I'm on my own. Oh, you're I'm on your saying, own. But we went to the old one. If I yeah logged in in the old one, and just came on, you know, I'm on I'm online, and then I t we told people, you know what, we're in an overflow. Call the you know the other one, and then people started calling me, and I added them. What would that be? Oh, that's interesting. I don't know. See, but I think I don't think I would see those people though. No, you might not see them, but you would certainly hear them. Yeah, you, you, I think you, you had that switcher that you guys used to use. Uh, uh, for the uh, for the um, TV program, would that allow you to bring in the two feeds? Uh, what switcher? Oh, you mean for uh, from the old play the TV? Yeah. But no, to do the TV switching? No. No, because it's all. Uh, it, 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 hey, I'm happy with nine people. Saying, all right, and and, is, and come on, if if some people can't get on. Well, then more people will want to get on. You know, it's, it's, that's the idea. Yeah. 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 Apple makes a living doing that, right? Exactly. Put the iPhone out, and they don't have enough. Exactly. <laughs> I'm the iPhone of talk shows. Okay. But people <laughs> only want what they can't have. Huh? Precious coveted people want box. What, people they want always, what they can't have. Right now, what I feel sorry about is we banned Doug from this program for what? Yeah. How long? About two months. It's been maybe three months. And the reason we banned him, by the way, the only person ever banned on uh, on uh, GabNet, I don't ban people, you know, even if I don't like them. And believe me, there have been some people that have called this place I can't stand. Uh, I try to discourage them, you know, by saying I don't like them, Jeff. Uh, but, you know... Uh, uh, it, 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 but I will never ban anybody from the program. Uh, e even if I hate them, even if they're fucking my wife, okay, I won't ban them. Wow. But we had to ban Doug because he became so disruptive to the group dynamic. And I think all of you agree with that because of his alcoholism. Drinking, yeah. That, that uh, it, it just got to the point where I said, no more, and I blocked him. Well, There's no shows that would let a guy on that was so inebriated that uh, he couldn't carry on a conversation. You're right about that. But, yeah. it, you know, uh, I did with him because, I mean, you know, he's not a mean guy. He's not a horrible guy, you know. So finally I had to block him. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't take it anymore. I had a show to do and I was leaving the air every night just exhausted from having to deal with him. So we banned him. Uh, and blocked him. And then we got the new number here. And uh, one night, he, I think he called uh, Albert. And then he tried calling me. And I went, eh, you know, I can only have this happen long enough. Maybe he's learned his lesson. And so he called. And he sounded pretty sober, I think, the night he called. Yeah, he and, was fine. And he was fine. And he was, you know, he was reserved. And he would say things when he had to say things. And I said, well, you know, you're, you're back, Doug. Okay? As long yeah, he, as she's... She, remain a good boy you're back and really what i'm doing here is i'm not only uh, trying to make for a good show i'm perhaps trying to help his sobriety all right hey, you know, Alex, maybe would you let on uh was it will from sacramento or whatever will we had to will we had to get rid of we had to block that was it serious XM. Oh, george w bush you well it was just it was just that he how can I put it? He can, he absolutely never contributed to anything. No, he was good for a very long for a very time. long time. But he, you know, he had a brain he yes. had he had a brain problem. He he had been in an automobile accident, oh. and and uh, he did have a brain problem. But it wasn't bad for a while. But then it got to the point where he was in this loop. You know what I'm saying? And it was just very difficult again to do a show when he called. Uh, and uh, uh, it was I just, very entertaining, though. He, he, up to a point, but you know, the guy was uh, how can we put it? I don't want to use the word defective. Uh, <laughs> he was deficient, okay. And it may have been entertaining, but it was entertaining because we were being entertained by somebody who had a a problem, you know. And exploiting. And, and I think that's kind of exploitative too. I felt guilty about that. 
you know, that hey, I was I hey, wasn't Alan. doing him any favors. But anyway, the point is that Doug, finally, I let him back on, and two nights in a row, he tries to get on the show, and we're full up. <laughs> you know. I'm gonna, I'll hey, drop Alex, well, I'm going to hang up because I'm going to come on for Jim's show, so I'm going to take a break. Oh, okay. So, so if Doug guys. wants to call, he can call now, okay? So you you stay on, Tony. You're staying okay. on as long as I can keep you on. Okay, I'm just gonna get no sleep juice. for you, Tony. I'm gonna get a tomato juice. I'll be right you, back. You're gonna go get a tomato juice. Anybody here drink tomato juice anymore? Only, only I with like a, V8. Buddy Mary. You like V8? By the way, we do have an open line now, so anybody who was trying to call before that couldn't get in, uh, you can get in now. Doug, you know you're welcome to call. But anyway, as I say, you know, so I. Um, uh, uh, I guess the only other guy I ever kept off a show was uh, was uh, uh, what's his name? You know, uh, you have yeah. a couple of people right now that you say you don't want them to call. So. No, I, I I have people I prefer wouldn't call, but I if they called I would answer it. But I, I guess that they still, even though they respect you enough not to call. Well, that could be. I mean, they disrespect me and they don't call. You know, but I mean, I, I, uh, everybody's welcome to call this program. I don't, I, I don't make, uh, you know, if, if I saw certain names come up, I wouldn't be happy about it, you know, but hey, you know, this is, a, I, he, my feeling is if you ask people to call you, then you kind of have the responsibility to answer the call, don't you? Yeah, sure. You know, and that's why I've, in, in my whole career, I think I've only banned basically, I think two people. In the program, and one was Will, who I happened to like terrifically. I mean, I met the guy and I loved him, but you know, he was just he wasn't coherent. And the other one was Doug because he was so drunk. Otherwise, I've never ever you know banned people because I just don't believe in it. Uh, so there, there's your answer, Jason. Even in the early years uh, when you were doing talk radio, you never hung up on people or talked over them. Uh, you know, if they had, uh, if, for instance, if they if they liked the Mets and you didn't like the well, Mets. Well, I, you know. I always had a policy that even if I was hanging up on them, so to speak, because at some point you're going to have to hang up on people anyway, Yeah, I would always say, well, I, you know, I'm getting sick of this call, and you suck, and thank you for calling. I would always say thank you for calling. I thought that was part of your stick when uh, you were, you know, back in the day. Like, no, yeah. whatever, click. Well, it, a, lot of, a lot of talk show hosts would turn the pot down and oh, that was another, that was a, on top of them. That was the talk uh, radio trick. Yeah. Uh, and you would, you would start yelling at the person. Uh, 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 what, that's it. Limbaugh uses this trick. Uh, I know Hannity uses this trick. Uh, you yell at the guy, and then you go, oh, you, you turn down the pot, right? right. So you can't yeah. hear the guy. And then they say, you say, oh, he must have hung up on me. Right. <laughs> and that's how you got rid of him. Uh, I never did that either. Somebody suggested that once to me, and I just couldn't bring myself to do it. You know? yeah. Sure didn't do it on Monday, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> How you and, doing, and, Doug? And, uh, Skype, you don't have a pot to turn down. I don't have a pot to piss in. <laughs> um, uh, um, uh, uh, hello uh, to uh, Doug. There's Doug. Hi. I, I, you sound coherent tonight. Barely, but uh, I'll make it, and if it gets out of hand, I'll hang up. Oh, okay. You, you, you'll you'll uh, cut yourself. Oh, I, we have ten people. You can see here that... Uh, uh, Phil Meyer, hold it up, Phil, so the TV audience can see it. He always hand, it turns that up well. It's, it, it, you can it barely see it because of the light, um, whatever. But it, yeah, it says ten. ten, so I know there are ten people who are uh, who are on the line. How's the dog? I thought he was ranking me at number ten. Oh, I, uh, let me turn the other lights on. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, 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 Tony, how's the dog? Actually, uh... I know that certain people don't like us talking about your dog, but fuck them. <laughs> Basically, she's doing good. She got all shots. I think I'm going to take it to the park tomorrow with my sister or Sunday. Yeah. I'm got, actually, you know what I'm trying to do? The vet told me try to crate train her. So what I do is when I, know, I listen you, you, to you, you've show, told us about this before. Yeah, but, but she's doing good. But I, she's lasting like three hours in the crate, and then I let her out. And See, then what I you do is you crate cool. train you her. Leave her in the crate that long. And when you got a completely freight train, a crate train, you put a UPS sticker on the crate. And bye-bye dog. 
I, I, I keep running it for about maybe two hours, maybe less. It's about that time. How much, she she weigh now? How, how much does she weigh now? She weighs uh, 23 and a half. Ah, uh, still a pup. Yeah, so, yeah. it's st still a pup. Pretty soon that dog's going to weigh 3,000 pounds and kill his mother. Jason. <laughs> yeah, my brother said I, was always, I was always so against crate training before because I thought that that was cruel to dogs. But we did that with our boxer, and boxers are freaking off-the-wall dogs. Oh, yeah. He is the best dog in the world. He doesn't have accidents in the house or anything. But, you know, and that's another thing people need to learn. A dog doesn't have full bladder control until they're at least six months old. Yes, they love talk. their crates. They females love their crates. Females they love the crates? Yeah. They do. My, yeah. mother, my parents had a dog that at about 11 o'clock at night, this dog is about seven years old, the dog would just get off the couch and turn around and look at them. And it was time the dog wanted to be walked to his crate and it wouldn't be okay for him to just go into the crate and go to sleep. Nope, nope, nope. My father had to lock the, the crate. And well, until the dog locked that. the crate, the dog was not happy. <laughs> that's the way. I mean, the dog loved the crate. No, my dog loved her crate. She would she would love getting in there. It was her little hideaway. Well, you this know, is, this is it's like a little den. I actually safe. leave the gate open for her so she can come out. I mean, the last time I had a dog was when I was a kid. Okay. I just, after that, it was cats because I basically lived in apartments and, and cats really are, are better I, for I, apartments. I, you hey, know? Can I say something? Yeah. I can't see you walking the dog at 11 o'clock at night. Nope, I can't either. Alex, you'd be cursing at that dog. Well, that's I another reason I don't have a dog. You know, yeah, here, here's what I imagine, you know. Aliens come from outer space and before they attack, they yeah. observe us for a while. And then when they finally come to Earth, they kill all the dogs. No, and the reason not. they kill all the dogs is they figure they're the masters because somebody's picking up their shit. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> they're walking in front of us and we're picking up their shit. Exactly. Who was the comedian that did a bit about that? If, if aliens yeah. came down the Earth and they saw people walking dogs and then, then people, those people picking up their yeah. shit... Yeah, they, they thought they would think yeah, the dogs yeah. were running the country. And, and, and Alex gets on Robin Williams. Uh, so. uh, uh, you, you need to turn your audio up a little louder, Dan. Oh. For some well, reason, I was just going to say that that is an old joke, and you were talking but about like Robin Williams stealing jokes before. Well, I did. I just made that up. So you know, I mean, uh, maybe I'm as brilliant as whoever figured it out the first time. Okay. okay. You know, it. every now and then, you, you know, I, I would say something, and somebody said, "You know, Spinoza said that." And I go, well, I never heard that Spinoza said that, so I guess I'm as smart as Spinoza. Yeah. Y yes, uh, yes, uh, Doug. Well, you know, we're talking about dogs and all that, and God, I hope I don't break out crying uh, like John Bonner there. But uh, remember that Twilight Zone episode with that hunter with his dog? You know, like, you know, um, the guy, they, they both die. And, like, you know, they, like, approach the gates of hell. They think it's heaven, and the dog won't go in there, and they said they won't allow the dog in there. Oh. And, and then the guy, you know, he says, well, I ain't going to go in there without my dog. And then they go to another gate, and it was like, yeah, oh, yeah, y'all y'all can come in. It was like heaven. Uh -huh. Did you ever say that? No, I never saw that one. Nope. Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Did it, so is Spinoza <laughs> stealing your jokes? Spinoza stealing my jokes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's true. It's like uh, with with music. A lot of the time, uh, you know, you'll. I mean, they'll like a lot of musicians are sued for stealing other people's music, even though they can't prove they actually did it because they didn't consciously well, do it. it you it's, know, it's a uh, a, a subconscious lift is right. what happens. Um, the uh, subconscious lift is usually as a result. Hold on a second, I'm just looking at something. It's usually as a result of, uh, the subconscious lift is usually as a result of th it, it, them coming up with a, a melody line and not realizing they've heard it before. And the reason yeah. that it sounds so good to them is because they have heard it before. A perfect example of that is um, uh, George Harrison's My, My Sweet Lord. You're reading my mind. Yeah, which, uh, which is, is He's So Fine by the Chiffons. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's note for note. Yeah. Now, wasn't there some music producer that bought a song for five hundred dollars from uh, someone whose song was then co was copied and then sued uh, for a, a large amount of money 
and the uh, the judge only awarded him five hundred dollars. Uh, uh, you remember that? Uh, who 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 that, who that was? I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, I really don't. That know. sounds familiar. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, you know, um, uh, in the case of George Harrison, he wound up having to you know to pay off another guy who had to pay off, but he paid off in an interesting way, was John Lennon. Because in uh, his uh, song, um, uh, I can't remember what the name of the song was, where it's uh, here come old flat top, he come moving up slowly. Come together. It come, come together, together yeah. is a line stolen directly from Chuck Berry's You Can't Catch Me. A line or? The line. Oh. Yeah. He, the line in uh, You Can't Catch Me is here come old flat top, he come moving up uh, slowly. Man, and, that's why I love your show. I, I've never ever heard that. Before. Yeah, and, first, and so years I've heard so that. So John, as a way of paying off Chuck Berry, recorded. Remember that album, Rock and Roll? Yes. In which he just did rock and roll songs, old rock and roll songs, and how many of them were Chuck Berry's? That uh, that's how he paid off Chuck Berry on that one. Huh. Uh, and he said he just used the line because he thought it sounded good, and he didn't realize that he had heard it before. Uh, so a lot of times there are subconscious lifts, but he's so fine and my there's sweet no one, lord. There's no clearinghouse for that. You would think that with the. Uh, oh, wait a minute! It's TV yeah. night, and uh, and and uh, Jason is showing his cat. Show your cat again. I'll give you it's make you like full cracking. screen there. Yeah, there you go. Oh, there he is. Is uh, oh. is that the only cat you own? Yeah, we just have one. And one what, cat, one and, dog. And what's the cat's name? Mia. Mia. Okay, Mia. so it's a female. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, everybody always calls a cat her. and yeah, She's uh, like a black calico. I didn't even know she was a calico until somebody pointed it out to me. I just thought it was like a black tiger. I thought calico was a, was a fur color kind of thing. Yeah, it has to have white, uh, black, and orange or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Your, yours is just black. And she just only has a little tiny spot of white. Oh, I see. Okay. Anyway, um, uh, where were we? Oh, yeah. So the, the, you get that kind of theft. And the best theft of all time, well, uh, there's a guy by the name of, uh, let me see here if I can find it. You know, what the hell, we're talking about it, so I think we can use it. Led uh, Zeppelin? Uh, no. Um, uh, what was the name of the, uh, here we go, Taj Mahal. Now, anybody ever heard oh, of the song? Oh, Taj? yeah. Taj oh, Taj man. Mahal he's, is uh, he's he's really good. Out here yeah. in Berkeley. Uh, huh? No. He lives out no, here in no, Berkeley. No, 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 no. That was a singer. This is a guy by the name of Jorge Ben. Oh, okay. And he recorded a song called Taj Mahal. You're all going to have uh, to kind of be quiet because you're on the same uh, pot as the uh, music is. All right. But let me see if we can get this. I want you to hear the riff that's in here, and then you tell me who got sued and, and by, by Jorge Ben and won. Listen to this. Not the best version of this song. Speaking of pot, I wish I'd smoke some of to that. Okay, just <laughs> shut up a second, Dan. So you, you, <laughs> it's coming up. One of the biggest thefts of all time. By the way, it's Portuguese. Here we go. Holy listen, God. listen. If you want my body. <laughs> now that isn't that that's that's that's, that's a major theft. That's a ma oh, yeah. that's a major theft, you know. And it was good up until that part. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I think it, the worst theft was like Vanilla Ice trying to say that he didn't steal from Queen. Millie Vanilli. <laughs> uh, uh, Millie, uh, no, Vanilla Ice, not Millie Vanilli. No, well, Millie Vanilli, they were just lip syncing. They were just lip syncing. They weren't singing their songs. That was their problem. But that's pretty sad that what was, happened then. That one guy committed suicide. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something about that song, too, yep. which was very strange about it. I first heard that song in Ibiza, Spain, in a bar. I talked about the other night, the Finca. 
And I, the, every night, this guy would play Taj Mahal by Jorge Ben. And I finally went up to the guy who was playing and said, what's the name of that song? And they said, it's Taj Mahal by Jorge Ben. So I get back to the United States. Every record store I go in for the two for the next two years, do you have Jorge Ben? Who? <laughs> do you have Jorge Ben? Who? I go uptown. I go downtown. I'm in San Francisco. I go to the Tower Records. I go to everywhere. No, I never heard of it. Finally, I come back to New York. One block down the street, there's like a Spanish record store. And I go in and I say, you got Jorge Ben? They said, sure. Oh. <laughs> it was two blocks away. And, I, oh. and so I bought the album. And it was an album in which he did medallies of his hits. And um, I had known that song for years. And when Do You Think I'm Sexy came out, it didn't even hit me mm. that they were the two, you know, that he had stolen that from Jorge Ben. I, you know, I just know I like the song, but wow. it is an absolute note for note steal. I think there's one note change at the end where he goes up rather than down or something. But uh, uh, Jorge Ben sued him one, and uh, I, I think actually Rod Stewart never made a penny off that song. So, wow. That's a major theft. Uh, other times, it's it's small. You know, it's a line here or a, n a series of notes there, and so and a lot of times it can be excused. Rod well, Stewart was a pretty uh, slimy guy, isn't he? By the way, it's catheter time for uh, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> I should take a camera into the bathroom and watch. Oh, play by play. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I appreciate you announcing hey, that too. Hey, what did it's, he call it's, it? It's, slam and what was it? What did he call it? I like the Yoda figure. Stab and slam or something. <laughs> yeah, he's got a name for his his style of catheterization. Yeah. Now. Um, uh, Led Zeppelin is widely known as uh, musical thieves that yeah, yeah. came out in just a f in the last couple of years, really. Like Days of Confused was taken after an opening act from them, and um, I think yeah, even Stairway to Heaven was the first part of Stairway to Heaven was stolen from a Spirit song, I believe. Yeah, like note for note. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, you know, it's it's it's. Uh, it happens all the time, but the other the other big danger you run into are people who are you know in Hollywood, for instance, they won't take unsolicited scripts, uh, and they won't take scripts that aren't represented by uh, by agents uh, because they don't want somebody coming back and saying, "I sent that to you back in 1948, and remember it was about uh, rocket ships going through the air to a planet, you know, and I <laughs> I invented Star Wars, you stole it from me." And even if the guy never gets a penny, it's going to take. It's going to cost the the movie company thousands upon thousands of dollars Legal. just to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. So you I know. sat next to a guy at a bar mitzvah mm -hmm. uh, who was the uh, producer of um, you know those cop shows. Yeah. Um, I, I can't remember his name. Von something. Baron something. Yeah. Uh, so I I told him I had a good idea for a cop show. And uh, you know, he didn't really want to hear it. And I, you know, I told him about reserve officers, you know, coming home and, and, and doing those kinds of things. Yeah. Shortly <laughs> afterwards, he comes out with Reno uh, 911. Yeah. Great uh, show. You know, Great show. Yeah. 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 But, well, but, yeah. But, but, but still, um, you know, and other times, I mean, just because you had an idea doesn't mean 10 other people didn't have the same idea. Yeah, I understand. I mean, years ago, I had an idea. I thought... You know, uh, because I was doing uh, public access here in New York, and I, one night I'm turning on a show, and they're doing a talent show. And it's some of the worst talent. It's on public access. Some of the worst talent you have ever seen. And I said, that's a great idea for a show. Because I couldn't stop watching this thing. I said, we do Watch a show. Funny. We do a show in which people come on, and uh, they, uh, uh, we just pick the worst acts possible. <laughs> And we have a panel that's judging them and whatever. Well, about a year later, Chuck Barris comes out with the gong show. And I said, late again, you know. Uh, yes, Jason. Hey, there's been so many times. I told my wife, like, I invented this. And she's like, no, you didn't. And I'm like, I invented this. No, you didn't. It's like, I had the idea for this before it ever even came out. She's like, no, you didn't. And then there's been, since we've been together for like seven years now, there's been plenty of times I've said, you know, wouldn't it be nice if there was something like this? 
and then three weeks later we see something that was just invented and i think that the human mind they see a need not only one person develops a design for something to fulfill that need but multiple yeah. people do and then you know it, it just it really sucks that you weren't the one to do it first yeah um uh I, I, years ago i mean uh, uh, if I, well we have proof of it actually uh i was out of work uh, as I have been many times in my in my career, and I um, uh, decided I wanted to somehow do a show every day, and the internet had just come about. So what I did was I started recording a show every day, and then putting it up in a place where people could download it, you know. And um, this friend of mine, James Rose. Uh, he said, well, wait a minute, I think I could write a program that will make it so people don't have to go download the program or go to the site to listen to it, but it would automatically download it every day. It would go there, see if there was a new one, and then just simply download it. Hmm. So I went, that's great. And we, he called it Auto Alex. Well, what does that sound like to you? Okay. I, iTunes. It's iTunes. It's podcasting. <laughs> Uh, we were doing that in uh, 1998. Uh, we, we still have a, a date stamp on the program. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I suppose I could go try and sue Apple, but uh, uh, I don't have the money for the lawyers, and they do. <laughs> you know? would so. be awesome if that person who's suing for podcasting right now could win, and then you could prove that you were doing the exact same thing before they came up with theirs? Yeah, it's just, a, it, well, he claims, no, he claims about six years earlier, oddly enough, but it wasn't it wasn't the same thing. He's he, really he's really got a bad case. Yeah, supposedly he there's a little piece of code or something that he claims is part of the whole podcasting thing that he's claiming rights for. Not the entire system, mind you, just a, a small piece of it. Well, Isn't the truth the truth of the matter is, you know, podcasting. I, I didn't realize this until I started podcasting that Apple doesn't do anything. Apple simply points to what's called an XML file, and then that becomes the podcast list. That's what my on-demand is. Same thing. It's just uh, that's what Apple uses. And the only other thing that Apple does, though, is allow people to download automatically the newest program. In other words, I can say I want Anderson Cooper every morning when I go to work, and the night before it will grab it, download it onto my iPod so I can listen to it. Um so, uh, gee, a new version of Java is available. What is that? This week's Java? Uh, anyway. Oh, the, the guy I sat next to at the bar mitzvah was uh, Bertram Van Munster. Uh, from uh, the guy who was a producer He had a wife named Cops. Lily? Huh? Yeah, Lily Munster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, uh, uh, Doug. Well, you know, we're talking about you're talking about stuff like, um, you know, ideas you came up with, and but somebody beat you to the punch to it. Yeah. But, you know, I, as you probably know, I've you know, told you I have a brother who's like in that industry. And when we're, I was in better terms with my brother, I did kind of you know, a rough you know, screenplay of a zombie movie where it you know, pretty much takes place like in an isolated area out in the country. God, and, but I hate to be but, your brother having you hit me up for a movie deal. Uh, <laughs> uh, don't even, I don't even want to go there. But anyway, I, uh, I like, Night of the Living Dead? What's that? Night of the Living Dead? Well, 1967 be too young for him. But, but, but let me fin let me finish. Let me finish. Anyway, so I come up with this idea where you know these people kind of protect themselves by either covering themselves with dead zombies or using rotted meat to kind of get around. Anyway, I'm trying to get reacquainted with my wife. We you know you know we start watching Walking Dead, and there's you know a scene where they're like at an old farmhouse and you know and using corpses to cover themselves. And I'm like, you know what? That idea sounds very familiar. <laughs> yeah. And you might have come up with that. No, but you might have come up with that idea by watching Night of the Living Dead and then not knowing that's where you got it from. Where in Night of the Living Dead where they cover themselves with uh, either corpses or yeah. rotten meat. Yeah. It never happened in that movie. Oh, it never happened in that movie. 
Yeah. Now that's what I'm saying. It yeah. was kind of like, kind of like, it never happened in any of the de uh, living well, dead only movies. Only you would come up with the idea of, of people covering themselves with rotten meat to try and ward off zombies. Yeah, I swear to God, I did this rough draft. What, what was, was what was pretty cool? It was a place Will Smith movie. What was your film called? Night of the Living Refrigerator. <laughs> it's like uh, it's not. We're glad we're dead because we don't have to put it with Doug anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, I, I was trying to think of something else that, uh, that I, that I, you know, I mean, there are things I've done first, you know, uh, but Howard uh, Stern. Yeah. I was Howard Stern at one time before yeah. he was. Yeah. Uh, no, but I mean, it, 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 it you know, it, but the fact is that, uh, it isn't so much that you came up with something, but that somehow you were able to sell that something. Uh, hey, and Alex, do you, do you yeah. know what a high key background is in photography? A high key background. Yeah, it's when you shine lights on a on a background and it turns it white. Yeah. Uh, Amazon actually patented that uh, several months ago, and it's been something that photographers have been using well, for. Wait a minute, uh, but you're going to have to explain it a little better than that because why just it, if you shine a light on a background and it turns white, what does that do? Uh, I understand. Uh, you can control the background color. You can make it uh, low key, which is a black background, or gray, or or white, depending on how you shine the light at the background. Mark, you're familiar with this, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, can you uh, also uh, possibly explain the uh, thing a little better than I can? To you know, what high key background is? It's you just said it best. It's a way to control the background color. So Amazon, what was it? Uh, several months ago, patented. Yeah. Uh, something that photographers have been doing since the beginning of photography. Well, yeah. but nobody patented. There was a uh, thing we used. Uh, if Jim were still here, he could uh, agree with me. He remembers it. We used it at Play TV that they bought the rights uh, to this system the BBC had invented. And oh, what that's it, right. It was. It was. Uh, what did we call it? It was called something key. But what happened is that. Uh, you know, in, in TV, you have a thing called chroma key. In other words, you make take a blue background. Uh, we used a blue back background on the TV show here in New York, but you can use green. Uh, you could, for all possibility, use red, but you never do because it's closer to the flesh color. Right. But to use chroma key blue or green, and then you put your background on anything that is that blue or that green. You didn't uh, see it. What this thing did is it was a it was a backdrop. It was just a curtain, and it was with a, had a reflective surface. And on the camera, you put a uh, a circular uh, ring that had blue LEDs on it, so it lit up the screen in back of you. And so you could use green or you could use uh, blue or whatever, and that became the chroma key. And it was a beautiful, perfect chroma chroma key, you know. But it, you didn't have to paint a wall to do it. Yes, uh, Doug. Well, I want to get. Does your it have input. to do? Does it have to do with chroma key? Yes. Yeah. Well, yes, it does. Oh, okay. I, I want to ask you and Mark and Phil a question. Um, I, I, I'm a novice when it comes to you know taking pictures and stuff like that. But lately, I've been finding myself taking a lot of pictures during my travels in North Carolina on my cell All right, phone. get to the point. Very good job, too. I, I, I like to get to a, 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 you know, a point, a step up beyond a cell phone. Can you tell me a good basic camera for a novice like myself to take a little bit better pictures than on yeah, my cell phone? Yeah, a cell phone. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the trouble is these cell phones are taking such good pictures these days. Am I right, guys? I mean, for, no. Huh? no. Doug's taking really uh -huh. good pictures. They're really nice pictures. I don't think you need anything more than what you're using. I'm mean, Yeah, I, just the I, amount of light. There's, that, there's an old saying, Doug. The best camera is the camera that you have on you. With you. Right. And the fact and, is, what's great, I'll tell you what's great about the uh, the phone cameras. They're getting such high pixel rates now uh, uh, that for the normal person, this is something you just have with you at all times. So if you need to take a picture, you can, I've taken some beautiful pictures with an iPhone. I've actually had them framed. There's a little bit of a misnomer about, about pixels. It's not really about pixels as much as it is the size of the, um, what do you call that? Uh, the, the, the little chip there, the bigger that chip, the better the quality of the photo. It's not so much about pixels. When you how get much the light the light gets around the pixels. 
There's a chip. You know, I, I, I got a good story about some of these pictures I took. Well, I, let, let's not get into that. Doug. Hey, I, I got the no, no, information. No, really, Doug, Doug, really Doug, 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 calm down. You're coming. Exactly. You're coming exactly. close again, Doug. Just okay. calm down. Alex, I got the information on that song. <laughs> yeah. My uncle, who works for Yoko, yeah, uh, said it was Alan Klein. He was the manager of the Beatles after Brian Epstein died. Yes. After the Beatles broke up, George Harrison wrote a song called My Sweet Lord. Yeah. Klein, his friend in quotes, recognized the tune as being identical to an earlier rock song called He's So Fine. By the Chiffons. He found the woman who did the song and bought the rights for $500. Then he tried to sue Harrison for copyright infringement and was awarded $500. Was that it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, He's So Fine and My Sweet Lord. Uh, I, I I find that hard to believe. Well, I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, I get it from the horse's mouth. Because, I mean, those songs are identical. Yeah. What, what do you mean? He's I, so fine in My Sweet Lord? Yeah. I mean, yeah, but My I'm, Sweet Lord was written, I mean, He's So Fine was written by a older, a, a black uh, Motown type person. Yeah. This guy Klein found her. Alan uh, Klein. And, and bought the rights to the song. And then sued Harrison for uh, for infringement. Who sued him? Uh, Klein. Klein was managing Harrison. Uh, I understand. He was so. Uh, my, uh, and she said he was so, his so-called friend. Uh, but you know, so he says uh, uh, after the Beatles broke up, George Harrison wrote a song. Uh, he says Alan Klein. He was the manager of the Beatles after Brian Epstein died. And, you know, I mean, yeah, you know, but he, he also he, he also Yoko. became he also became so, Harrison's manager. Yeah. In fact, like the, uh, Lennon, and, then, Lennon, and then he tried to sue Harrison for copyright infringement uh, for for the uh, for this song. I guess it's public record, you know. Yeah, but I didn't know that. The, the, uh, if your own agent is trying to Alan sue Klein's you, Klein's such a dick. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, Klein. Uh, Klein was and one. I of understand the, it's not the first time he did it. Well, Klein was one of the biggest dicks in the business. Oh, right? it, it, you know. Uh, uh, they, they, uh, here, here's what Alan Klein would do. Mm -hmm. uh, he would um, um, uh, literally make extra money by getting a ha having a deal with Capitol Records where he got a I think a certain amount of stock. In other yeah. words, not not stock in the company, uh, stocks, uh, Beatles records. Let's say the Beatles put mm -hmm. out Beatles put out a new album. He would get like ten thousand copies, and then he yeah. could go out and sell those himself. <laughs> You know, so that was the kind of manager Klein was, and the Beatles yeah. didn't get any of that money. Well, uh, well, uh, he, you know, he sued. He sued for millions, but the judge said all that you really lost was five hundred dollars, <laughs> and so, uh, uh, and that's what he was awarded. Wow, that's a, that's a, against Harrison. That's amazing. Yeah, what did the lawyers charge? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> but, but you know, uh, I had mentioned the song earlier, and you said you didn't know what it was. So yeah. I, I texted my my uncle and I asked him, uh, you know, what what the deal was. No, yeah, but it was he's so fine that I that I know. I don't. Yeah. I'm wondering if I remember correctly that song. I'm trying to remember who wrote that. I don't. I, uh, it was a. Uh, uh, he didn't tell me. He told me, but in this thing, he didn't what, tell oh, me the woman's minute. name. Wait, here, let's 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 look this up. Uh, who wrote? He's so fine. Who wrote? Should Rob know? Huh? He's a trivia guy. <laughs> uh, who wrote? He's so fine. Oh, yeah. I, I got a, I got the music man in Detroit. I can text him. Oh, so fine. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Uh, uh, he's so fine. Wikipedia. Uh, <laughs> it was written by. Oh, it was written by a guy named Ronald Mack. Uh, Ronald I thought Mack. it was a woman. Yeah, I, 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 I should remember that. Is also renowned as a, a plain. Uh, he's so fine. Is also the renowned as the plaintiff song in the now infamous plagiarism case against George Harrison's <laughs> My yeah, Sweet Lord. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm uh, texting Barry Martin. He knows everything. Yeah. Uh, my sweet Lord. Uh, uh, well, wait a minute. Here it says, uh, wait a minute. Uh, the suit determined damages was scheduled for November 1976, but delayed until February 1981, uh, by which time Alan Klein Harrison's one-time manager had been legal advisor in the first phase of the suit had become the plaintiff by virtue of purchasing Bright Tunes. The final hmm. decision was that Harrison would purchase Bright Tunes from Klein. 
okay, for $587,000, the amount Klein had paid for the corporation. Uh, he, he paid $500, I believe. He $587,000 because how he settled it was by oh. buying the, the company that owned the song. Harrison I, bought it from Klein for $587,000. Oh, I see. My but, sweet uh, Lord, that's a lot of money. <laughs> Back then it was. It was a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, anyway, so, you know, the, the, these things go on, you know, and uh, it's just, it's very hard. I, I even find myself at times being very careful in everything that I do so that somebody can't come back and sue me because they say, oh, you said something or you did something or remember when I told you something? You know, many times people come and say, I got a great idea for something and I say, don't tell me. <laughs> you know, just don't tell me. Because I don't know you and I've, I don't know if you're going to show up the next day, you know. So how was the catheter, Patrick? Uh, it was great, 14 inches and... Uh... I know you like to brag about the fourteen, the fourteen inch <laughs> catheter, which only allows you one inch of room. I, I, I. Well, well, do remember this: that when you're putting it in, it gets your entire urethra that it goes through. So that's the fourteen inches, and then you have the little thing at the end. And of course, I double mine up, so. <laughs> Yeah, now the duct <laughs> tape is, Ron Jeremy the duct had tape a part's not going into your penis, is it? What's that? The duct tape part's not going into no, your penis. No. Okay, that, no, so I, that'd be kind of weird. Yeah, well, I, I think I'm yeah. signing off now. No. <laughs> yeah, that would be weird. No, it, it, that's just to extend it. You can... Yeah, yeah we, so we, you get, can we got it, it over. We got, into, yeah. we got into that last night, you know. And then the, when he's having sex, the duct tape is so that the hamster won't explode. Uh, <laughs> Barry, Barry says Ronald Mack wrote. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the uh, yeah. he's so fine. Yeah, that's what I just said. Yeah, yeah. we got that. Well, it took it's me a minute to get the information so. through via Detroit. <laughs> well, I just sent it to you if through if through Wikipedia. Yeah, well, you know, I had to get it on the. Phone. How wrong is Wikipedia? I mean, I don't find them wrong that much. Do, do any of you people? Because people no. complain it's not the really no. Huh? Would we really know? Uh, uh, Dan, if it's well, what I find about Wikipedia is I uh, I trust them for facts, but when I look at the writing on there sometimes, it's written by people who are, well, usually really big fans of whatever they're talking about. Yeah. So they get super geeky about it, like stuff that nobody gives a shit about. Yeah, I've, oh, I've oh, updated you know, you know, uh, 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 oh, Excuse me, Rob, what were you going to say? I've updated Wikipedia sites on certain things that I know I'm an expert on. Yeah, but you know something? I, uh, you know, we were talking earlier about Facebook, about Facebook bullying and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to tell you, interesting <clears> story. <throat> I had one day I, I go to my Wikipedia page and somebody has written some absolute lies into it. They just huh. added them and they got in. Sure. And I, you see, I got to I, I gotta look at my Wikipedia page every now and then to make sure that, you know, they haven't falsified. Uh, Was that uh, recently? Uh, no, that happened uh, okay. uh, the last yeah, time. Actually, it you, have a pretty, you have a pretty good, impressive uh, Wikipedia page there. Yeah, huh? it's, it's, it was I've written. By, it, well, it was, it was, it was, you it, also it, mentioned another one, too. It was written by Tommy Yamaguchi, oddly enough. So, you know, yeah. he's been a fan for years. So, and he's, he knows more about me than I know about myself, you know. So he wrote up the Wikipedia page. But, uh, you know, people can do that. I remember once uh, when McCain was running for president, somebody snuck in and changed his uh, biography to say that he had raped somebody. You know, so uh, uh, there's, there's no policing it. It's uh, anybody can change it. Yeah, but don't you don't you now rest. have to have the rights or something to be able to add to Wikipedia? I mean, you have to be vetted. Yep, just have an one. account. Yeah, so yeah. registered, and that's it. Right. Anybody that's all. Once you're registered, anybody can change anything, basically. Correct. Um, I believe it does have to go through some uh, approval process, but yeah. while it's going through that process, yeah, it's sitting out there as information so i know sometimes things get denied and, and they get pulled just by wikipedia itself 
yeah. Uh, yeah. for being false. But during that period, it does sit out there. So It's kind of backwards from the way a lot of sites are. Right, A lot of sites, you have to submit the changes, and then they're approved and added. With Wikipedia, it's the other way. You submit the changes, they're live, and then they can reveal them. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it could be up there for a while before, yeah. you know. It, 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 so, McCain was a rapist for at least a couple of days. <laughs> you know? It was the, the guy in the last, uh, the Republican uh, thing, it was something about... Uh, oh, man, what was that thing? It was something with butt sex or something like that. Matt Romney? Yeah. No, it, uh, the Republican primary is one of the guys that I forget what it was. It's her with an S, I think, though. I, yeah. Well, if you got the primary, you got Perry, you had um, Newt Gingrich. By the way, did you see the latest? Uh, you know, we, we uh, oddly enough, we haven't been talking about the news lately, and I suppose, I guess, that uh, we should. Um, uh, uh, but there's this headline today about Rick Perry. Have you yep, seen this? Got indicted. Yeah. yeah, indicted. He got, got indicted uh, on uh, two charges related to his effort last year to force District Attorney Rosemary uh, Lemberg to resign after her drunken driving arrest. Grand jurors charged Perry with abuse of official capacity at, uh, and first-degree felony in connection of a public servant. Uh, I thought it was, had something to do with the veto also. Huh? I thought it had something to do with sort of like uh, involving a veto. Well, here's the good news. The first charge carries a punishment of 5 to 99 years and a fine of up to $10,000. And the second Could charge... Could a nicer guy. Karma's a bitch. Is, ...is punishable by 2 to 10 years and a fine of $10,000. Yeah. But I was stuck. He may have to, he may, with Kwame Kilpatrick. He may have to sell... He may now have to sell Niggerhead Ranch. <laughs> um, hey, I can say it. That's the name of the ranch. That's no, nigga. I'm gonna go to sleep at the time. Uh, you, oh, you're getting tired, are you, Tony? Hey, I'm a little tired. Tony's again. I've got, I've got, I've got ten minutes left. I've, I've got, I've got, I've got ten minutes left in the show, and he's pussying out on it. I'm surprised your dog doesn't eat you because you're such a pussy. I thought you were on vacation, Tony. Uh, I'm back to work. Come on, Tony. It's Friday night, man. You're in New York it's, City. You're it's going to bed. It's party time. Party time. Woohoo! I'll see you Monday. City that never sleeps, man. Uh, uh, oh, okay. By the way, we were talking about you today. Shecky, oh. Shecky and I, we were we had lunch together. Oh, that's you nice. Always, you always seem to come up because we say you're one of you're just one, a very nice person. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Did you go to your Chinese? I know you usually get Chinese when you go. Well, no, we get, we get sushi. We go to this uh, uh -huh. the su sushi buffet. Uh, oh. But no, we didn't go there today. Today we went to get Chinese food because we got soup dumplings. Oh, that sounds mm. good. They're yeah. hoping they were serving your dog. And I'll talk to him. I'll talk to him. <laughs> okay, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. If anybody else wants to join the panel now, we have our first uh, real opening. Uh, and Doug's been too good for me to hang up on him, so, you know. I wish you'd let me tell my story. You'd find it very interesting. Uh, I, think, I, think, I think he's getting on the edge now. Go ahead. Well, if you hang up, you'll have eight. Well, well no, I, I mean, you know, <laughs> Phil, you know, Phil saw some of the photos I've been posting. Anyway, there was like this old school. Oh, this Miranda has school joined in the middle us. of nowhere. Yeah. And so I was taking pictures of it, and... and Going up to like some of the classrooms where the broken windows, and I did not go into school itself because you know you don't know what the hell you're going to run into, like asbestos and lead paint and stuff like that. Yeah. So like all the rooms were just uh, like all torn up and everything. I come across this one room; it's all clean, has a you know like a mattress in there, a couple of recent empty bottles. I mean, like somebody was like living in this thing. It's like, yeah. well, what's the point oh, here? What's that? What's the point? Get. Well, it was just kind of scary, you know, being in the middle of nowhere. I'm you know, I'm taking pictures. I mean, I could have been shot in this place, and nobody would have ever known it because, and somebody was like living in this old abandoned school. Uh, Doug, but by the I way, we're we're, be, we're being joined by Miranda, who I Doug, think could finally I purposely get in. don't go into old abandoned schools because I know in Detroit that there's people living in them, yeah. and I uh, will uh, be uh, shot Detroit if I go in. into them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Detroit would be an ideal area to take pictures of. I mean, my God, the room is so there. awesome. You, yeah. To take pictures, you've actually encouraged me. I think I'm going to start doing well, it. You, a little you bit have more to be often. careful. Oh, it's so cool to take pictures of these old places, like you know these stories these buildings could tell. 
like the Packard plant. It's been in the last uh, two Transformers movies yeah. because of it. But there's a lot of old, uh, you know, dilapidated buildings that are really nice and cool to take pictures of. But I want to go in them because I'm pretty sure there's people in them. Hey, Miranda's here, gang. Hi, Miranda. Hello. Hi. Uh, 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 how have things been going? Any any mo- uh, Did you get to see uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy for a third time this week? <laughs> I opted not to go tonight. By the way, you know it's amazing because I always loved Lee Pace in um, in uh, Pushing Daisies. Okay, that's where I know him from. And then I lost his career because I, you know, just you know, Pushing Daisies it was it for me. And all of a sudden, I suddenly realized. He's been in the Hobbit movies. Yep. Y- you know he is like in the uh, in, in the Guardians of the Galaxy playing the the bad guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and, and I'm amazed at how much work this guy has actually had over the years. But he's such a good actor that he's different in everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, he's wonderful. Yeah. Not typecast. Uh, th- no. Oh no, he's all over the map. No, I mean he played uh, uh, this guy who is a computer guy in uh, in uh, Halt and Catch Fire, and that's as different from anything else that he does, you know. And then in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, I mean it's hard to tell it's him because he's got so much makeup on, but he's oh, he's, but you, he, huh? I I I recognized him immediately just just because he he stands out. Yeah. Um. Uh. When he wants to speak with authority, yeah, it it, it was just perfect. Well, I immediately it, it, it noticed... matched the character. Yeah. You know, I I mean that's what you expected. Oh, I immediately it, it noticed. So I, I immediately noticed Karen Gillan. Yeah. You know. Same uh, here. Uh, uh, but who, I knew about her going into it. Yeah, but she's she's getting a lot of work. In case you don't know, Karen Gillan was the companion on Doctor Who under Rose. Matt Smith. Huh. Rose. Ro- no, no, no. Amy Rose Pond. Oh, Amy. Yep. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, Amy Pond. Yeah. And, and and actually, I think a really good companion. Maybe one yeah, of the. Yeah, she was one of the best ever. Uh, and she and she had some pretty good acting chops. So I I was I'm happy to see her working, but she's got a series coming out this fall on ABC, called Selfie. And, and it's about some some self absorbed girl. Who's always taking selfies of herself, and somehow uh, she gets she's so popular she gets a manager, an agent who tries to save her from herself or whatever. And uh, supposedly, according to the uh, TV wags who have seen the pilot, they said today uh, they they've said uh, in the last couple of weeks that they're betting this is the first show to get canceled. So I kind of feel bad because it's Karen Gillan. You know, I would love to be able to see her on my TV screen every week. Uh, hey, you know uh, what I saw today, though? Uh, because uh, Fox has been sending them out to be seen for Emmy consideration. And uh, I, I saw Gotham, uh, the new oh, show cool. that's going to be on Fox, which is uh, it's more about Jim Gordon than it is about anything else. He's the centerpiece of the cop. And uh, he, uh, he uh, does... Um, it's it's actually it's it's a it's a good show. I mean, I uh, it's going to be interesting. I mean, it's Bruce Wayne as a kid, you know, he's not an adult, uh, and uh, there's a Catwoman who's a teenager, <laughs> and uh, 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 there's uh, a, a lot of the characters that later become uh, 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 Oswald G- Cobblepot is uh, is is involved very much in the first episode. And it's a, it's not a bad not, not a bad show. It'll be interesting to see if it works. DC hey. DC usually does pretty good TV stuff. But now I'm starting to sound like your show. Why am I doing that? Now? Hey, Alex. Yeah. Because uh, it's entertaining. I, I, <laughs> I must be behind the times. Uh, yeah. I just saw that Jim Browning sent a tweet that uh, Ronald uh, Horshack uh, died two uh, two days ago. Who? Uh, um, uh, Ron Polito. Ron Polito. A couple years ago. No, no. he died a couple years ago. It's been a while. Why yeah. would I? Why would he? Why I, would I, I get I, that? I think. Uh, I think you're. you're, you're I, I think you're. Times. I think you're on delayed tweets. <laughs> well, it it came from Jim two days ago. Yeah, Jim. Jim just posted it, but I think he was 
uh, either teasing or maybe he didn't realize the CNN post, I think, that he put up it from 2012. Well, it could oh. just be that it's Revelstoke. They get the news a few years later. Yeah. Well, and they, uh, out here and, in San Francisco, and they also wait even for the later than that. They also wait for the ground to thaw before they can bury anybody. You know, I mean, so what <laughs> well, are we... well, you know, the moose that delivers the newspapers has to get through there first. And <laughs> poor Jim, come on. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at this. Let's stop. This let's thing, stop. You know, let's stop putting geez. down Revelstoke. You all know a moose doesn't deliver the news. It's the bear. <laughs> and when he wants to be tipped for Christmas, you tip him. You tip him. You bet your life you do. Uh, uh, gee, we got about uh, what do we got here? Oh, we got four. Uh, we got nah, about three and a half minutes here. Here left. It, I, it amazes me how fast this show goes. But when I start off, I go two hours, two yeah. hours. And then, and then Miranda goes like, uh, "I could never do more than an hour," and now she does an hour and a half without even breathing heavy, you know. She's young. Yes. Yep. And and your point is, you're old. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're old, and she's pretty. old farts here. Yeah. <laughs> Horshack is dead. Horshack. <laughs> 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 hey, uh, if there's some I could bring up real quick, does anybody ever hear watch that show on Comedy Central called Drunk History? No, but ever heard it, of it? I've been interested in maybe giving it a look. Is it any good? Well, it it is good, and I've been watching it. It's, it's the, it's the only show that series. Doug could totally understand. Oh yeah, I yeah, never, yeah I never heard of it. I'm surprised. It's on Tuesday nights. It, it's a it's a funny show. Just people get wasted and tell. Oh, historical tales and then people reenact their drunken stories so it's Isn't great it? but tonight like they were uh they were in hawaii talking about the stuff that happened in hawaii and the drunk guy that was on the show was phil hendry Yo, and yeah yeah now that just kind of surprised me because phil phil hendry i don't know if you who knows about Phil Hendry? Phil Hendry Didn't he like loses yeah. radio show Phil, or something. Phil Hendry. Yeah, Phil he Hendry, used to have a radio if, show. If, what, used, one of the most original guys. guys. Wait a minute, hold on a second. It was very original. I, I, and I'm, yeah. I've got to wrap this up, but just yeah. quickly, what he would do is he did a vo he did all the calls on his show. Yeah, he had a phone, and then he would talk right. into the phone doing a character and whatever. There were never any legitimate calls. They were all him. Right. Exactly. And but, and the best one I ever heard was one where he. Uh, he was talking to some guy who was coming up with a new reality show called Will You Be My Daddy? And it was where orphans would come along and try and do tasks like cleaning out the, uh, the garage and making a bed and hoping that they will uh, be chosen to be adopted by these people. And he had you totally believing it because the guy on the other side of the line, because he does all yeah. these voices. Yeah, we was, had him here in Wilmington for about a month, and yeah, it, it, he didn't last very long. I, yeah. I think people kind of like realized what the act was, and it was like. Oh, it, I still think it's one of the best acts. Yeah, in the was, I, I used to stuff. listen to him all the time on KFI. Yeah, the only trouble yeah, with him is he's a, he's a big right winger, though. That's his only problem. But, really, I didn't yeah. really but, guess that. But that's 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 uh, 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 Patrick's problem too. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, right wingers can be funny too. Hey, listen, you hear the music? That means uh, the week's over with. Have and, a great and, weekend. And so everybody can wave because we're it's on television. Everybody wave Bye, to the everybody. television. Bye. Thank Bye. you, Patrick. Bye. Thank you, Miranda. Bye. Thank you, uh, uh, Phil. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Rick. And thank you, uh, Rob and Jason. Always good to see you drop by. Okay. Thank you, Teresa. And uh, <laughs> thank you. Oh, and Teresa, I just saw her. She just popped her head back into the screen. Good night, everybody. Have good a good time. Night. Anyway, that's it for our uh, our citizens panel. That's it for the program. Revelstoke Jim is next, direct and live from Revelstoke, British Columbia. I'm Alex Bennett. We'll see you again on Monday. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay. Bye.